I will I will warn that my internet is a little unstable right now. So I apologize if you lose me. Yeah. Now, when you get this, uh, this start screen there and it just has a spinning wheel, uh, it's supposed to show uh, the Ecopart news or something like that. And it doesn't always work. Yeah. So even if you open a model, you can still have that thing and, and think you're not, nothing is happening, but then you have to go and navigate. Oh. But, yeah. but you open them. Have you opened? No, you haven't opened the model no. yet because there's, not, there's no navigator. Mm -hmm. You can. Yeah. So that one works. Okay. Okay. So so like this, like, oh, nothing is happening. Nothing is happening. That's something has happened. So you, because you have a navigator, so you can just navigate yeah. now. So like in the navigator, you can go to EcoPath and expand that first thing, and then go to input, and to model parameters. That's the best. The first thing that you that you have to look at. So here, one of the things that that is 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 worth noting is that you don't have a model area which is defined, uh, and which is right there below model gear. And that is always the first step that you should check. What, what, what are you seeing? And if you're gonna look at uh, value chain stuff, you should also kind of have a, a good grasp on the monetary unit. So you can define that uh, as, uh, as euros, I think here. And the model, model area? The, oh, the model area should be a hundred uh, square kilometers. And the offer of prices will be in euros. So there's you go to general options, monetary units, and you can go there and, and put euros. You have to. No, you check this. Uh, there's a uh, arrow down. Yeah. There's... Oh, right, right on the on the right corner, on on the unit. To the right. Oh, right oh my. Okay. Yeah. Now, one thing about the uh, model area, when we are working in EWE, uh, sorry, in, in the ecosystem part of the, 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 the framework here, the software, then uh, everything is per square kilometer, so per unit area. And a really important aspect of that, uh, of that is that um, it makes it very comparable from one system to another. So when you know something about like um, I work a lot in the North Sea, and I know that if the herring biomass gets at lower than 800,000 ton, it starts impacting recruitment. But it's a total useless, non-transferable measure, 800,000 ton, because how big is the North Sea? I can't compare that to, to the Strait of Georgia, because 800,000, what is that? So, so uh, once you get it per square kilometer, it becomes comparable. So that's a really important aspect of, of this. The units are important. Units are important. Units are important. And again, uh, so, so everything is per unit area, ton per square kilometer. When you're thinking about whales and seals and so on, you can think about square kilometer, which is the same as gram per square meter, which is much easier when you're talking about benters and everything. Uh, those two units are the same. And you, but you can, you can get a grasp of it in your head about how does that translate into something you can see for your, for your inner eye? Yeah. So everything with ecology is per square meter. But once we take the fish out of the water, that's not square meter anymore per square meter. So that's where the hundred. That's where the area comes in. So once we get to the value chain, we're talking about amounts. Now it's no longer how big the ecosystem is. Now it is how much seafood we bring ashore. I like and, and and for that we are talking about dollars per ton and tons of seafood. So units do matter. And in my experience, I was was reviewing a model where the, they couldn't balance it, and the number of penguins that they had included in the model made no sense. And once they defined their model area, they could see that. So it it's it does help a lot. So another thing that you can do is go to the basic inputs and. With this, you always check which are your, your, your functional groups. And then when you go to fishery, which is uh, right below, you can expand that as well. You'll see that there's a lot of things like the fleets will tell you who's fishing them, uh, the land, and you have now five fleets, then landings will tell you how much you've caught of it, of, of them. And then you have off vessel price, which is the, what you're actually paying for a ton of them. So those ones are not 
really right, right? Because what you're saying is that you're paying, uh, I think it was six, 6,000 for euros per ton of seal. So that, that's a little bit off. Uh, in, the, in the tutorial, that should be around 600. Uh, caught should be worth, oh yeah, yeah. you can just double click on, on, on that. Yeah, and you can. Oh, 600? 600, yeah. And uh, for caught, you should put something like uh, 1400. Uh, Within, oh yeah. So, so. yeah. Yeah, for whiting, that should be 200. Anchovies, they should be 160. And shrimp should be uh, 17,000. But I realize that I have not changed the, oh, you're actually missing another, another zero for the shrimpers. So you're 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 missing a zero for the shrimpers. So it's one seven zero zero zero. Oh my! Okay. Really? Yeah, we wanted. We, okay. Your yeah, this if, when you compare cod to shrimp, shrimp is a lot more valuable than cod, and it's it's sometimes in in orders of magnitude. And uh, for oh Macro? sorry yes yeah mackerel I. I I don't remember putting the price. Oh, mackerel is 350. And then the and anchovy from bait boats. Yeah, that should be a little bit 160 as well. Okay. Yeah. Uh -huh. I mean, we can change that, believe if you see fit. Would, would that be a little bit lower or higher? What do you guys think? Higher yes. or lower? Elena says higher. Could you tell us why? Oh, it should be like better preserved, so like less damage, maybe? Sainers are, are not, are also pretty good states. And it's going for food, uh, whereas the bait boats are just going to be used as bait. Oh. Uh, putting, that's for catching uh, uh, crabs and... Um, okay, so the other way around, around. sorry. From, from more likely the other way around, yeah. yeah. It's always good to discuss these things. Put it like 100. So we, we know that it's, it's cheap. Okay, so with this, what we've done here is create the first initial block that the value chain is going to use to connect the, or the value, chain, the value chain plugin is going to use to connect your echo path model to the, the actual value chain. So go to output and then go to tools all the way down. There we go. And then you can go to value chain, which is the last one. So go to parameters, you can check that out. Uh, you, want, you, you want to specify where we're at here. So because you only have an EcoPath model, you could run with EcoPath. Uh, if you had an EcoSteam or, or, or EcoSpace, you can also let them run with, with both. Let's uh, click about run with EcoSteam because we may want to go there. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So. You right now don't want to automatically save results to a CSV file because we're going to run this a, a few times. Uh, but when you are working on this, uh, maybe you should do that. Uh, don't add the prompt to confirmation on delete. And there's a thing on the right that says that aggregation. I recommend that you always run it unaggregated first. Uh, and then if you want a, a result which is particular for the fleet or the group, you can do that. Uh, and, I, and I'm going to show you a little bit later on how to do it. When you go to defaults, uh, with this uh, right below the parameters, and uh, exactly, yeah, it'll just tell you what a normal uh, value chain is supposed to look like. And I say normal because none of them really look like that. Sometimes you have distributors between the producers and the processors. Sometimes the processors uh, are as well the producers if you have like a huge factory shift. And maybe you don't have a, a, a big retailer. In, in the country and it's mainly a wholesaler that then exports the fish. So all of these things are, are, are just there to tell you that we have different categories within the value chain that, we, that, that, that we're gonna associate enterprises so that an enterprise can be one rather than the other. If you go to flow, that's the, the which is below defaults. Okay, 
So here is going to be your initial interface where you interact with the value chain. And where, if you want to start, you can go to add, and there's a drop down menu there. And you can say create producers from feeds, which is the, the first option. So oh, you have to drag those down so that you can, you can see the name of, of, of all of them. You should have five of those. Yeah, there you go. I, yeah. That's my range button. Yeah, you can go to, uh -huh. yeah. It's it, smart to have them uh, on the left there so you can just move things over to the right. Mm -hmm. So the, the, the next couple of steps here, what, what, you, what, what you've done is actually you've linked the catch to the value chain. And whenever, or on, only if you change some parameters within those boxes, you will have to, you have a different value addition uh, in, in this step. But right now it's, everything is flowing well. Uh, so go to uh, shrimpers. And in the tutorial, you can see that uh, shrimpers, uh, trawlers and saners are selling their catch to a processor that we have labeled primary processors. So why don't you go to add uh, and then you, wait, Yep, click there, and then you add processing, new processing. You can also do control shift two, that works well. And to your right, you have a, 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 a box that's over there, and you have a name that says processing one. If you double click on that name to your right on the section de selection for, details. For, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah. Then double click on processing one. And you can, oh, there you go. You can put it as a, call that primary processors. Okay, because you have not defined a nationality, uh, it appears as a zero. It's, it tells you that the category is processing. You can change that. Uh, I can show you that in a bit, but it tells you that it's not a broker so that it's false. Uh, and, and, and if it's a broker, what does it mean? What that means is that they are actually distributing the fish, but they're not assuming the risk. So for example, uh, let's say that you guys have a, a company and you sell uh, something and to a foreign market. And my business is to position that product in, 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 in that other market, but I am not buying your product. I'm just a distributor. If I assume the risk, I, 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 I'm, I, I'm not a broker. That means that I have to purchase your research before I can sell it. So these guys are just there for the past, right? And then you can see that there's a validation for a biomass ratio. We're gonna deal with that in, in, in a bit. And then you have a lot of different cost items uh, and you can fill them if you have data directly there or you can fill them uh, in, in, in the components tab to your left. So if you go to, to, to navigation, uh, value chain, components, and there you should be able to expand that little menu. And then you can go to uh, produce processors, yes. And you will see that all of the cost structure is, is, is there too. Uh, if you have all of this already set in Excel, you can copy and paste them. And that's the easiest way to input data, particularly when you have complex uh, value chains here. But go, go, go back to the flow, please, because let's, let's finish building this flow. So now we know that uh, um, fresh, fish, fresh uh, seafood products are often sold to the coolers. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. It's, it's actually much, e much easier if, if I can just tell you to add three more processors, please. And are they all labeled primary processors? No, 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 no. Each one will be okay. labeled a different thing. But you can see that now they are they're purple. I, I'm I'm really colorblind, so I hope that that's purple and not oh. purple. Oh, what yeah. did I do there? Yeah. Oh no, I thought oh. I could arrange them better. I thought that's so too. Okay. That's okay. okay. That's okay. <laughs> yeah, but we are missing one more. One more processor. Oh, okay. Yeah. So what what you can tell there? Uh, from the colors is that these, these, these uh, enterprises are unlinked to the value chain. So 
you have primary processors, but one of them should be labeled canaries. So you can go click and exactly. Then another one should be labeled freezing plants. Freezing plants? Yeah, so we're gonna make in frozen seafood. And then the last one you can label ABC, which is the anchovy bay company <laughs> that sells pelts. So yeah, there you go. Then you will add three distributors. Okay, so you can label them coolers, trucks, and frost trucks. Coolers, mm -hmm. trucks? The other one, trucks as in trucks. <laughs> and the last one is called frost trucks. And then you should add two wholesalers. One should be fresh fish and the other one should be warehouse. Warehouses, I'm sorry. Fresh fish and warehouses. Then you need three retailers. And they should be restaurant, fishmongers, and supermarkets. The other one you named labeled retailer, that should be restaurants. Oh, restaurant oh, no. restaurants, fish, fishmongers, and yeah. the last one should be supermarkets. Supermarkets. Yeah. And then we need three consumer groups, which, which are going to be tourists, locals, and regional. You said regional, just the last yeah. one? Yeah, it's regional, yeah. Regional consumers, but it's... Okay, so add one more random box uh, and I'll let you choose whatever you want it to be. So, all right. So when you have made a mistake, uh, you can either click delete and, and just click on it again. And yep, there it goes. And you have to agree. Yes. Another option is add, add like, uh, yeah, perfect. And you, you've made a mistake there. So like, let's go to uh, convert. Oh, no, actually, I don't know what, uh, un unclick that, please. So click outside the box. It doesn't do it with tweets. Okay, so you have to delete that tweet. Uh, but if you, if you had asked, uh, had created a, a processor, for example, or a distributor, and you know that that is actually something else, you can go convert to Click it and convert to, and you go consumer or whatever. And that does the trick. So you can always change a box into something else, but now just delete it, please. Okay, so one of the things that you'll see is that all of them are in purple, so let's start linking them. Uh, and you should uh, link shrimpers to primary processors. Click link oh. up at the top. Yeah, link, link. Oh, there we go. And then click shrimpers and then click primary processors. Okay, you should also click uh, bait boats and take that to canneries. Uh, then you can click the sealers and that goes to ABC. Then you should click uh, trawlers, and that will go to both primary processors 
and to freezing plants. And then you can click Saners, which will go to primary processors and freezing plants. Okay, so the plot thickens. Now you have reds. That means that your, your biomass ratios are not, not properly balanced here because be, you have one fleet that is supplying two things. It, it, you need to split that proportion uh, and, and it shouldn't be more than one, right? You're not the, the one, once you have a, a, a catch, that catch does not multiply in the trawler before it reaches the next thing. So uh, let, let's finish with the arrows first and then we'll, 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 we'll continue. So primary processors go to coolers, canneries goes to trucks, and freezing plants goes to frost trucks. Now ABC directly goes to regional. All right, then coolers goes to fresh fish. Uh, trucks go to warehouses and frost trucks also go to warehouses. And then you should have fresh fish that is supplying restaurants and fishmongers and uh, supermarkets that are, I'm sorry, and warehouses that are supplying supermarkets. And then restaurants go to tourists, supermarkets, uh, go to both uh, locals and regional, and fishmongers goes to locals. Okay, so that is kind of like the original shape or like the initial shape that you get with the, with, with the value chain. And, and there's a lot of things that you can actually infer just from this structure. And you can build this based on your own experience or if you are interviewing uh, stakeholders or if you've read a report. But like what you've done so far is pretty much create the flow of your, of your product and your value. Uh, if you click on one of the arrows uh, from, for example, the bait boats to the cannery, click on that arrow. Okay. You'll notice that your selection details have changed. It tells you that there's a biomass ratio of one and a value ratio of six, and that the group that you're transferring is entropy. So what that's, what, what that tells you is ratio and value ratio are both one. Yeah. Are both so one, everything yeah. is moved up, everything is passed on. Yes. So all of the catch moves to the next one and the value was kept the same. So uh, the, the bay boats sold their catch to the cannery at the price that you input as the off vessel price. Right? Uh, now click on the strainers to the freezing plants on, on the link. That, that works too. Okay. So you only have mackerel there, and but because you have everything go, all the mackerel is going to the primary processor, and all the mackerel, when you click the other arrow, click on the other arrow there, yeah. All the mackerel is going to the freezing plant. So you are pretty much uh, multiplying your flow. So try putting 0.5 in, in, in each one for the biomass ratio. And then go to. Not entry. No, no, no. Uh, just shoot. for the marker. Mm -hmm. Just for. There's yeah, but go actual... to the other. Okay. Yeah. There we go. Uh -huh. Okay. And because uh, the seniors are. are, are then uh, for primary processors, why don't you put that it's zero uh, for anchovy that, oh, no, click on the, on, on the seniors again, I'm sorry. And, and just go that zero, go, zero anchovy goes to primary processor. Uh, so click on anchovy and just go zero for the biomass ratio. And in the other case, put that it's one. So uh, for the anchoveta should be one, or the anchovy should be one. Uh huh. So there's. Why is it red now? It's red. Yeah, I, it shouldn't be. Uh huh. Can it be because the value ratio is still one for anchovy of Sainer is going to primary processor? Well, that has nothing to do with it. No, value is okay. That that can yeah. be that can be different. Yeah. Well, that so there's no check on that. Let's 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 go closer into the details. So when you go to landings on the value chain. Uh, under components, there should be one, one that, so like go to the oh, navigator. The navigator. Oh, yeah, 
landings, yes. So what you have here is the actual uh, connection between your source and your target. So all of the seals are going to ABC, but uh, the trawlers have some code that is being sold to the, the primary processor and the freezing plant. And so like that's one resource that has two things. So maybe, maybe you can go 0.5 and 0.5 and see what happens. Okay, so then you have whiting that is caught by trawlers. It was one, one, so like you, again, let, let's go 0 0.5, 0 0.5. And then you have anchovy that is caught by bait boats, by, and then by saners. So I think that that should have removed all the- It should all, be all, yeah. all of that should go now. All the rest should go, so let, go back to flow. And there we are. So what, what we have done is actually we've split the catch and as it goes through the next phase. So because we, we, we are, uh, there's a, a couple of tricks that you can do there. I mostly build a flow before and then go to the link landings and, and tab and then input the, the, those there. Uh, and there's a bunch of tricks that, 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 that you must go. Go to landings, please. Uh, okay. Yeah, so one thing that you can see is that there's a, a drop a two do drop down menus that are called group and fleet on the top. Uh, yeah, there you go. And if you go to group, you can select the group, like pick anyone. Uh, so you can see there that there's three, uh, that there's at least two uh, sources for the anchovy, and that is it goes to three different targets. So the trick is that for each source target combination, it should be one. The sum of it should be one. So like if you go to Saners uh, supplying anchovy, so that should always sum to one. But because we have anchovy boats, uh, bait, bait boats supplying that to canneries, that is okay. That, that's another uh, 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 su supply line. I see Dana's face and I wonder, do you have a question? Have I explained this correctly or are you a bit lost? No, it's good. I'm just trying to follow along on my own screen and it's just really slow when I have both <laughs> and I'm running. Sorry, no, that it happens. was that, an explanation. That's Jordan. okay. Yeah. If you, just if you reflect on it, you can see that in order to create this, uh, you need to ask a few questions to the fishermen, to those work and and the great thing about that is you actually learn a lot about the industry from, mm -hmm. from just uh, making a simple value chain as, as yeah. this can be done pretty simply. Yeah, if you, if you unclick the anchovy and just go to fleet and then select uh, maybe trawlers. Yeah, so trawlers land two resources and these two resources go to different uh, components of the value chain there. Uh, and the trick is that in both cases, uh, each one sums to one. And then you have a value ratio over there. So that value ratio is the multiplier that we would be multiplying to your off vessel price. If by any means, uh, I don't know, for example, a processing plant would pay more for the whiting than a, than a primary processor would pay more for the whiting than the freezing. Uh, in some, in some cases, uh, the more selective uh, a fish is caught and the most, the, the, the freshest is kept is actually, or like if it's caught life and, and, and maintained like that, that will always take a, a better price. Uh, but let's assume that most of, of, of or, or like the lots of the purchasing power is in the freezing plants. So put the uh, 1.2 as a value ratio for both freezing plants there. For both freezing plants? Yeah, so like the freezing plants are paying more for the, the, the resources than the primary processes, which so like once you see this, uh, it, 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 once we run the, this, it will make a little bit more sense. But what we're saying here is that even though there's an even split, uh, then the, the better quality fish is going to the, 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 the freezing plants. Uh, over time, this will lead to a difference in the split if there's a, a demand for it. So it could be that it starts 50-50, uh, 
but in five years after the market develops, it's suddenly 30, 70, right? Or, 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 the, or the rate has changed because there's a price incentive to, to change this flow. But right now, this is okay. If you can unselect the fleet uh, there as well, you can see the, the, the whole thing and it's okay to have a gap. Uh, and this is one part where you link the model uh, or the fleet to the, the, the first link in the value chain. If you want to see what follows, you can go to links, which is there on the navigator uh, and the components links. So right there, you have all of the combinations that are following your value chain. So you have canneries going to uh, trucks and coolers are going to fresh fish. So as you can notice here, all of the resources are mixed because now what you're what is flowing through the value chain is not uh, anchovies or 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 whiting is seafood products. So the, the the nature of what flows has differed. And another thing that is important to 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 grasp here is that because you are are, are dealing with products, the actual weight has changed. So for example, uh, let's say that when you are doing I don't know canned fish you're not putting in the fish with the guts and the head or the tail, or in some cases it's fillets in, 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 in case of, of, of the freezing seafood. Uh, most of the time uh, you can get like little packages of, I don't know, like for example, if you go to a Whole Foods, you can get like a, a prepackaged, ma uh, I don't know, mahi filet. That is a portion that you will take directly to your boat. So like that is a fraction of the fish. And there, that means that there's gonna be wastes. Right, so you have an input output ratio re, re, relating what comes in to your, 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 your processing plant and one goes and one leaves it. And also you have another parameter there that is how you split it. So in this case, uh, if you look to, to cannery, everything that is going from the cannery goes to the trucks. Uh, so like there's, there's not, uh, but like for example, fresh fish is, is selling to both fishmongers and restaurants. Uh, so in this case, uh, we're the, the, because the fish is kept fresh, uh, let's say that all they've done is actually cut the fish, taken the guts out and bled it. Right? That's a pretty standard practice for medium sized fish, at least. So that means that your fish will lose somewhere around eight to, I'd say 20% of the weight. Sorry, really three. What does that three mean? I'm just ready for following you. At three <laughs> points. At three points. At three points to make. Oh, three points to make. <laughs> Very relevant. Okay, make them here. Okay, there are three things you need to do, and these are all things that uh, Santiago likes to do and excels in. First of all, you have to talk to people. Then you have to eat a lot of seafood mm. to get the data. And then you have to surf the, the web to find out the things you can't eat yourself to. Is, is that a good characterization, Santiago? I, I would say so, yes. Uh, <laughs> yeah, like... It's, it's quite feasible. Mm -hmm. But yeah. I have often, I remember, often heard uh, Santiago and being with Santiago when he opens a can to figure out what's in the can and... Uh, uh, I, I, I bought a tiny balance just to, to, to weigh the actual weight of the fish in the can once you take the liquid out. So like I've done those kind of things. <laughs> but, <laughs> but That's uh, another thing yeah. that Santiago touched on. If you go back to, to the flow charts, which is, um, in, which is quite important, which is when, you, uh, when you're working with these remember that the simplest model is always the best model. So for instance, if you have the, the trawlers there, uh, they land, it's an example, Halibut and Hake, and they're very differently priced. Once they go to the next level, the processes, and they're passed on, it's just fish. Santiago mentioned that. Mm. We don't care what it, kind of fish it is, it's just fish that's being passed on. And we are averaging across everything that's being passed out. So we're just doing averaging as we move on. Yeah. Now, if you, for some reason, think that, oh, that if you have a specific reason for why that's not good, well, then you split it so that the trawlers land Halibut to one and they have, and you keep the, even if it's the same company that buys them, you, you just make it processor 
primary producer A and primary producer B know that that's the same prime mm -hmm. producer and you make different value chains for them. So you can always make them more complex, but the start for this and for any model is think about what your question is and then make the simplest model that will answer that question. Exactly. Uh, and yeah, so right now, what do you see? Because what, and this is another really cool thing. All of the arrows that you see are the same width, except the ones that are going from the saners to the primary processors and, and, and the trawlers to the primary processors. Which the other. What that means is that you are, uh, for primary processors to coolers, for example, all of the things that went into primary processors are going to coolers. And we know that that's not true. So let's go and click the arrow there uh, in between primary processors and coolers. And you can go to value or biomass ratio and put 0.8. Uh, what, are we telling, what are we telling the model here? Is that there's a loss in, in biomass because we, we're now, I don't know, we, we, we lost some blood. <laughs> we, 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 there were some fish that didn't make it and, and were discarded. There's some pro, like processing losses, right? For the cannery, for example, uh, it, it, we can, we can yeah, roughly, it's, it's, it's between 40 and 60% of the weight of the fish. So let's say that it's 0.6 for the biomass ratio. And for the freezing plants, let's say that they're just flash freezing the, the, the resources. So it's maybe 0.95, which is almost everything is going there. But now we go to ABC and, and, and we're dealing here with sealed pelts and most of you are, are, are into pinnipeds. So what is the I actual- I thought into fur, fur, fur coats. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that, that, that's, that's anachronistic now, Billy. Yeah. <laughs> but let, let, I don't know how, how much uh, or what's the, what's the percentage of the total weight of a seal that is actually, it's, it's, it's fur, it's felt. Any thoughts? Come on, small. Yeah, it, 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 it should be between maybe 20 and 8% or 10% of the, of the actual weight. Do you think it's lower than that, Billy? Maybe it is lower, maybe uh, it's 10, 10%? Five, I would say five. Five, Ooh. okay. Well, we could say yeah. we could say ten percent. Let's say ten percent. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you, but uh, what? Yeah, zero point one. Okay, but that now the, what the model is doing is actually multiplying that biomass ratio to the actual value of the resource. So that means that if you keep it like that, uh, and you go to to run value chain. Uh, you just go run ecopath. Um, uh, no, right. To, your, no, to right. your right, to your right, to your right. Uh, oh, there we go. Uh, no, 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 no. Not on the navigation, but on the on the main panel. Uh, then on the bottom of the main panel, there's oh, the zoom was yeah. blocking it. There yeah. we go. go. Okay. Santiago, what have you done? I don't know. I've broken it. It's not running. Oh, there we uh, go. Okay, so you will see that processing is losing money, right? The profit is negative. Right? So like that's an indicator that you are missing something. And if you go to units and, oh, sorry. This is the whole value chain aggregated and it tells you how much money and, and, and tons are moving to the producers, processors, distributors, wholesalers, and retailers. And on the total side, it tells you the, the actual sum of things. Right, but here you can identify quickly that the processing is losing money, right? And you only have costs for the distribution wholesalers and retailers, uh, because oh, well, to the distribution really because they're only buying the, 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 the fish, we don't know, and they're selling it at the same price, so it's a profit of zero, right? We, we, we'll deal with that in a little bit, but go to units, uh. And then you have all of the different components of your, of your value chain so, or enterprises. So go to ABC. Uh, okay, so what, what do we know here? Is that the seals that have come in, uh, we purchased them at, at, at 270 per ton. 
because that let's say that that was one ton of, of, of fish that was or, or, or seals and we we made a product that was just 10 percent of, of of that weight but because we didn't change the value ratio it's multiplying that to the same value so we need a multiplier for the value as well so we've lost some weight but we've gained some value that's how this works really so you can go to uh, to links if I'm going too fast, you please need to let me or, or, or stop me and go to ABC to regional, right? So here, what we have is that it goes, uh, you, you have two things that you can add to value. And you have a, a, an exact value per ton uh, or where you have a value ratio. A value, a value per ton is something that you input when you really have data. So for example, if I know that a single pelt uh, is way, weighs about I don't know, 200 grams and that, or like a kilo, and that is worth, I don't know, $400. That's the kind of numbers that you will be putting there. You, you have data for it, but normally you, you, you not necessarily have information or detailed information for everything. But what you can say is that uh, maybe the value that they're paying is 20 times as high as, as, as the ones that they, uh, sorry, the, the value that they're selling the pelts is 20 times as high as value as they bought the seals, right? So, or like 15 times as high or four times they as high. They have to cover, just, remember they have to cover the labor cost too they and, have, and all, all the things, machinery and. Mm -hmm. So like there's a difference uh, in, in, in what they're making uh, that you have to, so like they, they, they make something when they sell it, that's a revenue. And revenue minus costs equals profit. So in order for them to make money, then that revenue has to be higher than the costs. So let's say here that the value ratio is, is, is 15. Now let's go and run the, 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 the value chain again. And run Ecopath, go and go back to ABC. And there we go. Now we are making a profit of 135. Yeah, it's, it's worth noting that you can you can do all of uh, the value chain just with these ratios, landing ratio and uh, the value ratio. Now, the only thing you won't do there is to cover the cost of uh, of the industries. That's mm -hmm. not going to be the salaries and everything else. But you can look at the revenue side of this and how it, uh, how the fish moves to the. Uh, the, the value chain this way. Yeah, the only cost that you actually have right now for 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 this processor is really the the, the cost of the of, of the seals. It, but uh, we can you go also to freezing plants. Uh, so you also have a negative profit here, and it's because uh, we we have a value uh, a biomass ratio as well that is that that is negative uh, or that so you've reduced the amount of fish. Uh, that, that that goes through you. Uh, so if you go to to the flow uh, and click on the link between freezing plants and frost trucks, you have a value ratio of one. Uh, let's say that you have you have an actual value per ton here, and the value per ton is four thousand. So like a ton of frozen fish sells at four thousand. We don't know or I don't remember the, the who's supplying this, trawlers who's supplying this. So trawlers fish for uh, shrimp, right? Oh no, those are the shrimpers, no, yeah, okay. No, that, this, this will work. So go to your run value chain again. And run it again. And now go to the uh, freezing plants. You'll see that they're making a, quite a lot of money because there's been a huge multiplier for for them with the price. This might be a little bit too big. Uh, right? oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so the, the, but like, as you can see, there's two ways to input value when you have actual numbers and when you have multipliers. And it is very unusual that you will have a company that is or like a, an enterprise as a whole losing money. So you should try to check on these things uh, as you progress. And another neat thing is that you can go show flow 
to the right of the freezing plant on and it doesn't show <laughs> okay uh, let's try instead of selecting fishing plants uh, select uh, bait boats it's what? not sure it does not show the flow that's a bug uh, you should there we go. Oh, yeah. yeah yeah but that's all but like select saners maybe No, oh, this has not, worked. How could yeah, this not work anymore? I have no clue. But not, what you would see if this actually worked is just the flow uh, that you are interested in. So just the seniors going to the fishing plants, going to the frost trucks, going to the warehouses, going to supermarkets and regionals and locals. So like it will highlight that flow. And when you click, a, a, there's another thing that it's interesting. Go to uh, click on, on the show flow again so that, that it disappears. Uh, if you go to data aggregation and aggregate it, uh, click on, on that on the bottom and select by group. So this will actually group results by function group and run Ecopath again. And you will see all groups on top and click just, the, uh, let's say, shrimp. So like this tells you the story of shrimp across your value chain. And with this, you can it, it, just with your arrows on your keyboard, go up and down now, uh, go up. So like you can go and, and, and change to the different groups that you have. So it will tell you how each individual, individual group is adding to the total uh, value and employment and, 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 and revenue of, 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 of your value chain. We haven't added jobs or anything, but this is, is, is normally the kind of things that, 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 we, that, we, that we do when we're starting to play with the value chain. And Let's go to flow. Yeah, go to flow. Now, um, so as we move here from the producers and we move out to, up to the food web or value chain web or what you call it, the, um, so the, the amount of fish is reduced and you get up to tourists uh, and that's much less than what maybe than what was original, certainly for the regionals, for the pelts, it's much less. Now we can use the same principles as we used, uh, talked about in network analysis, where we, um, for instance, had primary production required, how much prime production was required for a fishery of tuna, for instance. Same way you can see, you can say here, we can extract information from how much fish production is required to feed the tourists in, in this case, so we can move everything to. And that's one of the things we've, we've done with the value chain, this combination of using things from ecology into the economic here uh, with the whole setup. And I think that's actually a really neat aspect of this. Yeah. And I also have to say that I, I mentioned when we talked about this last week uh, on Tuesday that uh, when we program this, this is really very different from how the rest of EWE is done. And that's because it's done in what's called object oriented programming, where each of these things you see on the screen here is an object that has certain properties and then we tie it up and we do all the calculations that way. So it was actually, it's actually a pretty cute way of, uh, of dealing with this. Um, yeah, that's... Yeah, this is, that's, that's, I mean, we can add some costs if you want, but the, the whole, like, like, there's a couple of things that, that, that you can take away from this. Uh, for example, if you are reducing the biomass uh, by a certain rate, that should only go as, oh, I'm sorry. There's one that we need to add before. Uh, go to, to, to the link between coolers and fresh fish. This is, this is an example I'm missing. Uh, again, let's say that once you get to the distributor, you only have minor losses in weight because most of the distributors don't want to mess up the shipment, right? So probably the biomass ratio is okay that it remains as one, but the value ratio, uh, this, this, this has to increase. Uh, why? Because most distributors are making money through the distribution of the resource. This doesn't need to be high if it's a local distributor that can be 1.2, that means there's a 20% increase in the price, and that's their markup, right? 
But if you're dealing with a shipping company that has to sell uh, your, your, your fish uh, across the ocean or whatnot, those multipliers can be high. So like put 1.2. Uh, and then you go to the fresh fish goes to two places, to restaurants and fishmongers, right? So let's say that the fresh fish that you have on, 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 on that wholesaler uh, ends up going to restaurants and you have a, a on that click, it's roughly 50% of your, of your fish goes in that direction, right? But it's only uh, that you have like a a five percent loss because the the, the wholesaler um, I don't know messed up is something and 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 there was product loss or you lost some liquids and 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 something happened. So what you do is is let's say that the fish is is I don't know like ninety five percent of the weight of the fish remains, but only half of it goes to the next link. So you have to multiply there. 0.95 to 0.5, and uh, with 0.5, and that 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 will be actually your biomass ratio from one to the next. So 0.5 would be your biomass ratio. 0.475. 0.475. That's what I meant. 0.475. Yeah. So what you're telling is that there's half of the of the biomass is going in that direction, but you're losing five percent of 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 your weight. And then you can put a, a bio, yeah, you can put a biomass uh, a value ratio of let's say two, right? And it, it may well be that the restaurants are buying the expensive fish. So if that's where the halibut goes, you mm -hmm. can you can have a higher value ratio here than for the fish monger, and, yeah. uh, and keep track of it that way. Yeah, and like for example, the fresh fish and fish monger, you know that you you have to you're dealing with only half of, of the fish, but the fish monger is uh, is is an, another retailer. So just go to, to 0.5. Uh, they, they, let's say that they are they're going straight away. Uh, and the value ratio, instead of being two, is 1.7. There's a 70% increase in the price instead of the, uh, doubling, right? So here you, you, you have to consider that, that you're not only dealing with how much weight you've lost, but how you're splitting your, 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 your flow in between uh, enterprises on the value chain. So when you when you have simple value chains which are just one line going to one and the other, you might miss this, and and that this can get to to to, to complicated results. And and I don't know, really, you do you have something to add? Yes, the, we're going to round this off. Yeah. Uh, so that, because it's, we we we've been going for an hour, and you think that's and you you can see this is actually not bad that we can construct in an hour. A, a rough value chain, and you can do that. So if you if for, if you want to get those socioeconomic aspects in, if you spend a day on constructing such a value chain as this, and you spend a week on surfing and talking to people, uh, you can construct a value chain that may be rather rudimentary because you won't have all the costs, you won't have all things, but you can get the structure of what happens to the marine producer, whatever you're working with, as it moves up to the system and give a much more complete description of it. And it's one that opens doors for getting um, people beyond those that work with the abundance of a species and the population dynamics and, and that kind of things. Uh, the people who are working with management and uh, with economical aspects and social aspects, social aspects of its interest. Um, so it is actually, this is feasible. It's not something that calls for uh, hoarding data the way that Santiago like, likes to hoard data. It certainly is nice if, it, if, if that's the case, but it's actually something that can be done uh, in a much simpler way. And then you can look at what other people have found for uh, how fresh fish operators, how cooler, how freezing plants, how they operate. So look at Santiago's uh, multipliers for those, and you can get that kind of information, both including with costs. Yeah. So and the, sorry, Billy, yeah. go, go. No, what, what, one of the things that, that, that it's a, a good workaround is sometimes when you add, ask a, a distributor, so like how much are you making out of this? And they'll say like, oh, I, I make up 20%, uh, I have a 20% profit. And if you go to the, to, to, 
to the run value chain bit again and just choose any any component. Uh, Nelly? Yes. Go sorry. to run run value chain, I'm sorry. Run value chain. Yep. Oh. Oh, there it is. Yeah. And then and then run Ecopa. And select uh, any any processor or producer of oh, any processor, yeah. So let, go to Canary and, and let's, so like these guys will tell you that they have a, a profit of 20%. So now you know right there, how much is your revenue given it's, you have a net profit because we, we haven't sorted the, the, the multipliers there. But what you, what you should expect is that you, you have a, a, a revenue which is bigger than, than your costs. And that cost that you have there, which is, 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 is your, your, that's the cost of the fish, right? So that if you know that, 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 that your profit is 20%, what should be the actual, what is the, how big should, should, should your markup be? And, 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 and you can derive costs from, from, from this relationship. It's, does that make sense to you guys or? or? Yeah, and if you also yeah. ask that distributor, so how much is, uh, how much is salaries uh, or how much is the fish relative to your total cost? Mm -hmm. And he might say, oh, it's 25%. Yeah. But I, the rest is for salaries and for buildings and for machinery and so on. Yeah. So one can actually get a lot of, out of fairly simple interviews. It's mm -hmm. not necessary to get into the books or, or everything, but if you ask, especially if you ask a couple of people or three people or five people, mm -hmm. But uh, you can get much of this information just by going online and, and by uh, looking at publica uh, publications, yeah. Yeah, yep, yep, yep. Company reports and that kind of stuff. Right, uh, okay. um, yeah. yeah. Let's take a, uh, unless there are, are there any questions, burning questions? No. Then the 